Hello, welcome to Tough Crowd, everybody. Saudi Arabia's religious police have banned Barbie dolls, calling them Jewish toys and decadent symbols of the West. I hope we have a lot more decadent symbols than Barbie, you know? And I think Barbie is, first of all, good for girls, not because it teaches them how to be girls, because it teaches them about boys. Because all we would all, you take your sister's doll, you take the clothes off, stop playing with the breasts, you know what I mean? <laughs> if you had a fight with your sister, Barbie would pay the ultimate price of being dismembered and left for dead spread eagles, you know? She'd be on the floor like a victim of a sex crime. Your mother comes in like the profiler, you know? All right, the person that did this was uh, a white male, approximately six to ten years of age. <laughs> Unemployed, not a first-time offender, you know? Get the forensics unit. Oh, uh, that is kind of... I don't know. <laughs> um, hmm? A team of Egyptian lawyers, folks, are suing the Jews in international court because in the Bible, they took all the gold when they escaped slavery. Now, what's, what are they going to do? Pull out a surprise witness from that time? They're going to unwrap a mummy? <laughs> That's a good one. The Egyptians, first of all, the Egyptians are suing the Jews. Who's going to be their lawyer, right? All right. In, in Iraq, all right, in Iraq, thank you, folks. In Iraq, post-Saddam, men are lining up in theaters to see pornos, you know? And I've seen a couple of Iraqi pornos myself. Now, it sounds like a joke, but I'm serious. I saw this one, it's called a hand job in Chakrit. Now, I'm not proud of the next one that I saw, but it was truly called, it was on a double bill, it was with wet ones of ass destruction. Saudi Arabia claims Jewish Barbie dolls with their revealing clothes and shameful postures, accessories, and tools. What are they reading off the box? Are a symbol of decadence to the perverted West. Well, uh, if Barbie dolls are too much for them, will we ever be able to coexist with the Muslim world? And somebody who's really tried to do that. Nick, what do you think? It's one of your top goals. It just shows how much they hate Jews. It's not even about land or anything. It's about, you know what I mean? Well, they come up with their own Arab Barbie doll, you know? No little girl, though, wants to play with a doll. has got like a five o'clock shadow, and she's wrapped up like a burn victim. <laughs> I don't think uh, Barbie's Jewish. I think Tickle Me Elmo is Jewish because, you know, <laughs> sarcastic, in your face. <laughs> a little pushy, yeah. Yeah, a little pushy. All right. With the Jew, I mean, to, to claim that the, the Jews would create the Barbie doll, the people who gave you the dreidel, you know, a miserable, stinking toy. It's like ludicrous to think, you know, well, it's like the same thing. They always come up with the Jewish Barbie doll. It's like when I was a kid, they said that the way in which the Zionist conspiracy occurred and how Jews communicated with each other is why we had Passover. So that, well, that was the way they would, you know, it'd say kosher for Passover, and they'd have this Hebrew writing in the back, and that's the way we got our message. Uh -huh. each other. <laughs> what, 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 what did the message say? It was... <laughs> It makes up, I find dreidel sexually exciting. Really? <laughs> you know, you fiddle with them. Right, come on, Gimel. With you, I will play. <laughs> come on, Gimel, exactly. <laughs> What's exactly. next? They're going to claim the uh, Barbie's dream house was built on occupied territories? <laughs> <laughs> you know, not many people know this, but originally, Barbie was spelled B apostrophe Arby. It was Barbie. <laughs> <laughs> Barbie. <laughs> Not, not a lot of people do. But if she was Jewish, look how much work she's had done. You know, you know uh, for years, feminists have been telling us that Barbie is bad because of the body image. Mm -hmm. And all this proves that for years, feminists have just been anti-Semites. Wow. <laughs> and they should be like, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. Well, speaking of <laughs> Judaism, the dean of an Egyptian university is going to sue the Jews of the world as he says, for looting Egypt during the exodus thousands of years ago. Lewis, it's a true story, but is there any merit to this suit? Look, come knock on my door and let's see if he gets my money, that prick. <laughs> yeah. uh, unbelievable. It, it, of course there's no merit to this suit. First off, the Jews wouldn't have carried stuff out. When we steal, we do it with a pencil. <laughs> That's right. That's true. <laughs> Jews don't loot. Yeah. But then again, these first Jews are black, right? That's what it said in the Bible. So. <laughs> That's what the guys say over on 8th Avenue. Yeah. <laughs>
they don't. They steal, like he said. They, you know, they, you know, bank fees, buck fifty here and there. You know, yeah, but there's a whole other way. We I think work. I found them. You He's know, but I like how they should. You know, what about the overhead? The plagues. You know, locusts and uh, whatever it was firstborn. Take that off. Part of the sea. That's money. You right. Know? You're right off the firstborn. Oh, well, we have. We get uh, the Jews get the uh, pyramids back if they give the gold back, right? Exactly. I think so. Well, they built them, but they, were they, you know. They weren't the lead. They didn't have a lease on that. They just were the builders. Way to slow it down, Harry Potter. It was before Italians. Now listen. <laughs> <laughs> Our construction workers. All right, look. Yeah, we did. Right. Let's talk about the porno. Let's talk about these Iraqi porno movies, Dave. Now, we all know. <laughs> no reason this comes here. Not they, in front of Barbie. <laughs> <laughs> but what do you think? These Iraqi guys are watching. They have porno. Don't you think that kind of already proves the Muslims' point of the decadent West, like corrupting people? They're all lined up to go see porno movies. Well, these people, you know, they just got through a horrible experience. You know, they're in war and death. I don't think Lizzie McGuire and Dickie Roberts is going to do it for them. You know, they need <laughs> hardcore action. After seeing bloody death and disarmament, yeah. you don't think they want to see Saving Silverman? I don't think so. I don't think any of those, any of these movies are going to do it for these people. You know, they're used to, like, I guess a relaxing evening of putting, like, I don't know, up. Electrocuting a dog or something like that, you know? <laughs> They're not into his story. Let's yeah. put it that way. It's, it's nice to know. We have soldiers over there dying, so, you know, Akbar can rub one out in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, sh I, 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 I'm shocked that there is actually, there are people going to porno houses in Baghdad when SpectraVision is so much more discreet. <laughs> <laughs> Their name of film does not appear on the bill. <laughs> You, so, think, you think the floors are sticky at the lows in Times Square. Can you imagine? These guys have been sexually uh, repressed for, what, 20 years now? It's like hummus up to your knees. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, hey. Oh, hey. Oh, oh, hey. Oh, hey. Yeah, I think we're onto something here. Instead of, like, more troops, maybe we should just mobilize our porn stars. <laughs> send them over there, you know? Janet James and Ron Jeremy. Just let them, you know, get a feel and a taste of it. Yeah, well, Ron Jeremy looks like an Iraqi, doesn't he? A little bit. Yeah. Well, once we give them video cameras and they can do it in their own homes yes. and show them to each other, they will be immobilized as we are. Yeah. <laughs> He's right. That's a good point. Because porn takes a lot of the mean out of you. You, know, you, don't want to, you don't want to blow anything up. You just kind of want to lay down and have a hot pocket or something. That's true. <laughs> we, ought put a, we ought to put a string of hooters on the Gaza Strip. <laughs> well, uh, I guess that's it, really. Um, <laughs> we're going to come right back, folks, and let me tell you something. Don't turn off these commercials. The national economy says watch them, and everything's going to be just fine. An all-new episode of... Wow. Now we're going to throw out all these politicians going on television to win votes. Howard Dean was a guest on uh, K Street. John Edwards was on The Daily Show. Arnold was on The Tonight Show, and he's going to be on Oprah. First of all, everybody goes on Oprah, okay? Oprah has Bush and Gore when they were running, talking about their wives. Like, that has anything to do with running the country. The best leaders, sadly, were cheaters. JFK, Gandhi, Martin Luther King, not to mention Clinton. All our presidents cheated. George Washington died of syphilis, okay? And this is the guy that said he could not tell a lie. I chopped down a cherry tree, okay? He must have told a couple of lies. I, I wouldn't lie about a cherry tree either. Did you tell me he didn't give Martha some nonsense when uh, we came home with an STD? And, and so he's sitting there lying through his wooden teeth. You stupid Jim David look-alike, George. Now look. All right. Let's take a look at some of these. So far, so good, huh? So far, so good. Got a ways to go. That's a good point. <laughs> and this is why I'm going to run for governor of the state. And ladies and gentlemen, may I introduce to you the senator from North Carolina, John Edwards. Brewer. Senator Edwards, how are you, sir? Well, I am on your show to announce that I am a candidate for president of the United States. And I guess I should probably tell you now, uh, we're a fake show. Well, what do you think, Stephen? Is this selling out, or is it the mountain coming to Muhammad? Excuse the expression. <laughs> In these times we live. Um, no, I don't think I don't think it's selling out because that implies there's something left to sell. <laughs> and I think that um, at this point, if you get to that stage in politics, you've had to pedal your ass so hard on every street corner for money that you're essentially hollow inside. 
But whose fault do you think that is? Is that the, the politician, the people that run it, or the whole our society that wants people to like, say things that make them feel good? What, what, I don't understand. How well, you're saying like, fault. But whose fault is it that that's what we get from politicians? That we get these. Well, they want him to, you know, they want him to. Uh, the whole concept of putting him on those shows is to make them look human. That's right. the concept. Right. Because they, because the, you know, they haven't gone. Most of these guys needed to go to a leadership camp at some point, so that when they appeared in front of people, they would act like a human being, as opposed to, uh, you know, like Robert Dole, one of the great instances of a guy who, when he was off the camera. You know, it's, it, it, you know, it, actually a funny, nice guy. On the camera, you're going, oh, this is disgusting. <laughs> you know? And it's all of them are like that. They have a public persona and then this kind of chippery, <laughs> you know, and, and why Leno didn't, he was this close. All he had to do, as soon as Schwarzenegger said he was running, Leno should have just popped him. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of sitting with that grin going, <laughs> If you're going to The Daily Show, it's a political show, it makes sense, but I don't want to see, like, you know, Dick Gephardt, you know, kicking it with Ludacris on Jimmy Kimmel Live, right? <laughs> Just to get the black vote, you know what I mean? Yeah. Or whatever vote. Rumsfeld on Cribs. R this is my coffee table. <laughs> <laughs> of course this is my coffee table. It is ridiculous to imply that it's not my coffee table. This is how rumors get started. I've Check stated your it again and again. <laughs> But the problem is people start looking at, well, you know, they, instead of looking at the person, they go, well, he isn't good on TV. Instead of actually looking at the candidate, then, you know, like, you know, Fred Grandy was great as Gopher on uh, the Love Boat. Yeah. Gopher. Did you ever either. see his voting record? <laughs> no. Huh. Me either. No, I don't know. I think it's the judge. That's what I was hoping. All right, here's, here's something that's actually, uh, there's a college, grassroots college thing with these college-age girls, it's not what you think it is, fooling men into believing they're 13 or 14, then the men who go for it, they, they put their emails and their addresses in public and call them up and crank call and go after yeah. these uh, guys. <laughs> oh, my God. That's, so, <laughs> that's really oh, chilly. That's creepy. So what do you think about that, guys? Anything? That's like Vanilla Sky. Uh, it's, <laughs> do you think vigilante uh, cyber justice is good or bad? Look, or? It's, it's, it's hard to defend pedophiles. <laughs> <laughs> But someone, someone has to step forward and do that. Thank you. So, Dave, <laughs> do you want to, uh, <laughs> is it really? I don't know. What, what if your fantasy is to talk to a college girl who pretends she's 13? I mean, doesn't that kind of defeat the Well, how about this? I don't think, I think the fact that they say that we're college girls is just a big lie. You know they're not college girls. They can't. That's just to keep you turned on even if you find out you're going to jail. <laughs> when did typing become erotic? <laughs> I don't know. How did I miss this? I don't know. But, oh, you, you can check. You go to a chat room. Oh boy, I want to touch you there. What, what is the? What is so? There's nothing there. It depends on the. It depends on the font, Lewis. Oh. Light, light, light Helvetica. Oh. oh. Italicized. Right at the end. Go italicized. Oh. I don't know, but I got a sneeze guy on my computer. <laughs> Look, folks, America leads the world in commercial watching skills. So don't slack off now. We'll be right back. Craig Yankers, we call. Hi, I've got some um, sperm I would like to bring in to be tested. I've been in your pool. I've been in your pool. They answer. Did you just say tie you up and slap you in the ass? No. <laughs> you are ridiculous. Yeah. Have a nice life. After that, it's all about making the connection. And don't be mad at me because you're ugly. I didn't make you that way. God did. That's right. pretty rude and pretty cocky and pretty ignorant. Frank Yankers, new episode Tuesday at 10 here on Comedy Central. Want to miss Johnny Depp in this movie? He knocks it out of the park. Rated R. Now playing in theaters everywhere. This is Perkins. in theaters everywhere. This is American citizens. Not easy, you know, in addition to swearing that you're not a communist or a habitual drunkard, both of which you're free to be after you become an American, you have to pass the citizenship test, which assesses your knowledge of American history and government. We decided to test a few of our most opinionated regulars. <laughs> they've, all, they've all surrendered their passports. So here to help me answer the questions is Aden Rao, a naturalized American from India. Hello, Aden. Hello. And uh, are you ready for You took this test, right? Yeah. And how'd you do on it? He had to fail. Very well. He did very well. Did he? Yeah. Excellent. All right. <laughs> All right. Let's do the questions. These are questions. 
Let's not forget what this is. He passed. He's a citizen. You guys can lose your passports, and I hope. Oh, that would be my dream come true. All right, these are real tests. All right, ready? Jim, you've been trying to act smart lately on the show with your stupid gestures. You don't read a book, but you sit at home at night going, I think I'll gesture this way tomorrow. <laughs> All right. Jim, we'll ask you the first question. Who becomes president of the United States if the president and vice president should die? That's a simple one. Uh, Speaker of the House? What's the correct answer? Oh, look at it, Johnson is the Speaker of the House. Yeah. Well, whoever fed you that answer, stupid. God. I know you didn't it's learn that. Easy I didn't know. I, know. I didn't know that one because you're dumb. You're Irish immigrants. Shut up. Yeah. You're telling me they taught that at uh, Parsippany Junior College, where the stupid went down in Jersey. <laughs> he, went to, he went to Exit 54 College. They didn't have a name for it. <laughs> All right. Next up is Keith. Keith, you're from Philadelphia. As yeah, I'm from to Philadelphia. Hear. That's uh, the birthplace of all of You should know this one. Who's the main writer of the Decky of Independence? <laughs> Say it again? Exactly. Yeah. Who's, the, who's the main writer of the Deck of Independence, baby? The Declaration of Independence? Yeah. Oh, Colin, let me tell you something. He don't know. Who wrote I do know. Wait a minute, man. Because uh, this guy named Bob in my neighborhood. Right. <laughs> he, uh, you really are stupid. In 1973, he, he told me. He don't know. I do know. Oh. He don't even know what a Liberty Bell is. He lived there. <laughs> The Liberty Bell. He tried to impair it. He tried to shellac it. You don't know, dude. Uh, you know what? Thomas I, Jefferson. Just let's move on. He's just retarded. He's right, damn it. Yeah, of course he's right. I was going to say that. Why? He's not his great grandfather. Yeah. Just his great great grandfather, Thomas Jefferson. That's my great great grandfather. He got yours right, stupid. You didn't know. You're from Philly. I didn't know that. Hold up. Okay, Patrice, I don't know if you have to answer, answer this or that. Keith has to answer. He Who has the power to declare war? Uh, the, the president. Uh, the Wait a minute. The Congress. president. The president or the, the, oh, the Joint Chiefs of Staff or the, 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 the Senate, the Slayer. Who has the power to declare war? What's the answer? The president. What's the answer? <laughs> Only the Congress has the power to declare war. The Congress? Now, let me say so. Whoa. Wait. The George Bush just declared war on Iraq. Nobody else. He, he thinks his bot captain. <laughs> now listen, at least I, <laughs> at least I know what a Liberty Bell is. <laughs> I'd say I'm judging from the way it is. Patrice actually pulled off a couple. Norton pulled off a couple. You really were dumb. I didn't know any of those answers either. You're lucky, or else I'd call you a real ass. But either way, I think both of you, your passports and your citizenship and what you contributed to my land. <laughs> and Jim, you did pretty good. <laughs> If you think if you think these comedians are tough in the studio, wait till they hit the stage. People say, hey, why don't we invade North Korea? I'll tell you why, folks, because the North Koreans probably know karate. Colin Quinn rounds up his tough crowd for a big one-hour free-for-all. Watch out! They're saying what they want. I put toothpaste on my penis. About who they want, because they can. I love the Puerto Rican Day Parade, because you know where they all are. Tough Crowd stands up premieres Friday, September 26th at 10, only on Comedy Central. This is special. That's yours, right? Well, you know, folks, more young people see Crank Yankers in one night than watch all the Sunday morning political shows. That means the next president of the United States may have to get his message out by doing the voiceover for a masturbating puppet. <laughs> if you were running for office, what non-traditional way would you get your message out to the voters? Boys, Stephen. Well, to take advantage of the recent coverage, uh, convergence of politics and entertainment, before running for public office, I would become first an international movie star who, in my blockbuster critically acclaimed films, would not only kick a lot of vaguely foreign ass, <laughs> but also be thoughtful and romantic to get the female vote. Then, right before the election, I would cure cancer. <laughs> Nothing to do with entertainment, admittedly, but come on. I cured cancer. All right, good enough. Lewis. Uh, I would announce my candidacy on a Girls Gone Wild commercial. I mean, it looks like a lot of fun. And then I could spend a long, long time trying to convince the girls to put their tops back on. While I was explaining family values to them, I'd be spending time eyeing their wondrous melons. 
The American people would be overwhelmed by my sincere attempt to maintain the virtuousness of the young ladies, and I would be elected president. It's that simple. All right. Nick. I'd get my message out by putting my picture and political views on the inside cover of a Domino's pizza box. <laughs> Remember, they move 200 million of these things a year. What better way to get your message to the people than having it delivered to their front door in a thermal pouch by a guy named Abu, <laughs> who's been in the country for a total of 20 minutes. He's living proof the system works. And what more captive audience to contemplate your views than a guy who just smoked two joints, polished off a deep dish meat lover's pizza, and he's so bloated and stoned he can't quit reading the box over and over again. All right. Dave. Yes. Nice one. All right. Nice one. Dave. I would announce my candidacy on acid. <laughs> I would do about 12 tabs of acid and then run through the streets screaming, Bin Laden is hiding in my eyebrow. <laughs> As I punch myself in the face over and over, I'd finally head over to the Good Morning America crew and write the names of the other candidates on my balls and press them up against the window and say, who wants to debate? <laughs> All right. Look. That's a grand... Now, you fellas, you and Louis, you're out on this tour. Yes. What are the uh, big cities coming up? Where have you been? Where are you going? We've been in Dallas and Houston. We'll be here in New York uh, October 18th. We'll be in we're Milwaukee and Madison. We're in New York. It's a big city. The Beacon. Okay, the, the Beacon the Theater. Beacon. Milwaukee, Two where? Two shows at the Beacon. Milwaukee at the, uh, the Orpheum. Uh, you know? At Madison, wherever it is, somewhere it's small. Oh, uh, Madison, yeah. <laughs> Minneapolis and Pittsburgh this week. Are you guys are doing these theaters? We're yes. doing theater. Don't you feel kind of uncomfortable knowing that I can't do theaters and you guys are selling them out? Does that bother you? Well, it's a little different. We don't end our stuff with, like, masturbation stuff. We just say, like, you know, and in the better world. Ah. You know, something like that. So it's kind of an inspiration. Yeah, we take it up a level. That's beautiful. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, good luck. Everybody go see them. There's a great tour. And Mitch Hedberg's there sometimes, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. All, all the time. Beautiful. All right, all the time. <laughs> Nick, I'm doing a 12-seater in Appleton, Wisconsin. Ooh. That's a spicy meatball. <laughs> Me and Nick are going to be working at Skid Marks. In, uh, <laughs> Folks, that's our show. Take care. Have a good night. Oh.